Hey everybody, I am Haley Gray and I am the founder of the Women's Entrepreneur Network. And I'm excited today because we're gonna be talking about how do you win in a high conflict divorce. Welcome, Denise. I am so excited to have you here. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, I'm excited to be here with you, Haley. We're gonna be doing this awesome interview in just one second. <laughs> So welcome, everybody. I am so excited to be here with you. We're going to be talking about a really hot topic because, you know, one of the first things people say when they're like, I'm going to get divorced is I'm going to go out, I'm going to go hire an expensive attorney, and I want the best, most fightingest that's going to defend me and my rights and up one side and down the other, and I'm going to win this thing. Yeah. And what is your experience, Denise? That is the exact opposite of what to do. <laughs> I'm not saying don't hire an attorney. Yes, of course. But that's not the first thing that people should be doing, especially when it is a high conflict, when they know that it's going to be challenging or difficult with their uh, soon to be ex spouse, when they know that that person is going to, you know, be difficult or fight for whatever. Um, that is not the first thing to do. That is actually the second thing to do. Right. So what is the first thing that, that you do? The first thing to do is for them to have their emotions about not only the situation, because divorce in general is super triggering. It's super emotional, but also they're soon to be X right? You're divorcing this person for a reason. So you are already triggered by this person and this person knows you. So they know how to push your buttons and to, you know, piss you off or hurt you or say the things about you or your family or, or your children. That's a big one, right? Um, so the having the emotional triggers under control is always my top number one advice for people to do. Because when they have their emotions under control, then they become untouchable. And nobody, even the soon to be ex, even the soon to be exes, shark attorney, or whoever people want to describe that attorney, whatever is thrown at them, they have their emotions under control so that, and my tagline is always so that they feel calm, confident, and courageous. Calm their nervous system. That's number one, top. Confident, confident walking in, confident being in, if it does go to trial or even mediation or even just confidence in the outcome of this divorce and courageous, courageous to speak their voice, to get their point across, to say the things that need to be said so they could advocate for themselves, so they could advocate for their children, custody of their children, whatever it is. There's so much um, hiding and scarcity and intimidation in these high conflict divorces. So uh, courage, being courageous to actually say those things, speak their mind and their voice in a way that is heard. That's the key. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about what it is that you do. So I am a divorce doula, as you know, winky, wink. <laughs> um, and what I do is I walk my clients through the entire divorce process. So pre-divorce, the divorce process, and then after the divorce. And what I do is I support them with the emotions like I was just sharing, the emotions so that they go through the entire divorce process feeling calm, confident, and courageous so that they get everything that they're asking for in the divorce. I've heard so many horrible, nightmare, hellish living divorce stories where you know women and men both um, – are on the end of the divorce process where they're financially ruined, depleted, drained, uh, mentally depleted and drained, and emotionally depleted and drained. And 
it's it's so sad. I hate hearing those stories. So I'm such a huge advocate to walk people through the entire process so that they get what they're asking for. And in my experience with my clients and, and my community, they just want fairness. They just want, you know, to be fair with the child custody, be fair with you know, the the living expenses, the financial part, um, house, you know, when, when children are born and raised in a house, why should mm -hmm. they have to move to an apartment when, you know, the children aren't, right. um, they are the victims of the situation, but they aren't to blame and why should they be punished? So that's what I do for my clients is I walk them through the entire process pre- and all the way to post divorce so that they um, go through the entire process feeling calm, confident, and courageous. Right. And I mean, I think a lot of times people are going to say, well, this is BS. And I will say prior to working with you, and no, y'all, I'm not getting divorced. I was working with Denise for some professional stuff, some professional development. Um, that, you know, in seeing and knowing some of your clients personally, if I hadn't seen some of the cases, I would have thought you were kind of maybe overstating or lying or, you know, like, are you serious? You've got to be kidding me. And, yeah. you know, it's interesting to see how once you start to get some of this stuff under control, um, you know, I, I think one of your clients was what, 10 years into a really nasty, messy divorce and they were still going. Yep. Yep. Well, they were already and divorced and they the were ex, already divorced. And the ex kept pulling the crap and playing the games because that's what they do and dragging the uh, ex spouse back to court. And this client is remarried like they've moved on with their life they or tried to move on with their life but that but this is what narcissists do right the ex just keep i want you in my life so i'm going to pull you in any way shape or form that i can it, even if that is court and as you know this was in two different states and they multiple different states yeah yeah and it's just crazy what you know, there is a such thing as legal. What people can can get away with. And, yeah. you know. And the law allows it. The system and, allows it. You know, and every time you think you're going to escape the narcissist, unless you do the work, they're going to keep yanking you back on your chain every time you think you've gotten free. Just to prove right. that you have not, in fact, gotten free of their clutches and their grasp. Right. Yeah. So I helped my client uh, basically snap it up, like pinch it off. Put an end to <laughs> like, it. Put an end to it. Like, yeah. stop put it into the trap where it was, be heard in court, and literally put an end to the nonsense. And I mean, I've seen a couple of the cases that you've worked on, and I've personally known a couple of the clients that you've worked with. So I can say, yes, indeed. You know, you put a stop to the crap without having to wade into court mm -hmm. and spend more money and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars of legal fees. Because the other thing here that it's worth noting is that if you don't get your emotions under control and you don't deal with the pre-planning and you don't go through this stuff first, if you're in an acrimonious divorce with somebody who is a head case, who is narcissistic, it's likely going to be tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees and people going back and forth. I mean, and, you know, you see divorce cases like, you know, Angelina, Jolie and Brad Pitt. It's been since, what, 2016 that they've been going back and forth? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, I, I've what, heard. Years? Yeah, I've heard 10 years and millions of dollars still not divorced. I've heard in personal cases, um, a million dollars, another 10 years. And the, those two were divorced, but the whole back and forth to court thing, it like, and, and that's the thing that 
I am so passionate about helping my clients do is stop the BS because that's what it is. It's total BS. There's no reason right. for any divorce to last 10 years. And there's no reason on God's green earth why a divorce costs a million dollars or more. None. Zero. No, except for people keep ringing the attorney's bell and dragging back into court over and over and over again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So That's how does this I play out what I in the case of things like, you know, child custody? It's the same. The, the, the narcissist, the, the narcissist main goal is to destroy the other person whether that be male, female, whatever, the, the partner or soon to be ex. And the narcissist knows there's two things that that person needs or wants. The children, obviously, right? Or at least 50-50 fair split of child custody with the ch children and right. money. So those are the two things that they just immediately go after, like, mm -hmm like a shark, like that's their main goal is the money and the children, children and the money. So with the child custody, it's, you know, the intimidation, the threats. And if you have stay at home moms who right. don't have a career or job or a boatload of money sitting in a bank account, mm -hmm. who've been at home moms, the intimidation runs really deep because they're like, OMG, how am I going to fight? him? How am I going to do this? I don't have any money. I don't have a job. Mm -hmm. And so that's the number one threat that they spill out immediately is I'm taking the kids away from you. Mm -hmm. I experienced it in my own past. I call my past life. And my ex did take our children away from me. It was a threat. And he did it to prove that he could do it. And I was a stay at home mom. So I totally get it. And I remember curling up in a fetal position in my daughter's Barbie doll bedroom on her bed mm -hmm. and just uncontrollably sobbing because I believed that he was going to go all the way with this, right? He took the kids, he took them away and he was going to, you know, do the next step and the next step and the next step. So I was just distraught. I was devastated. Like, Oh my God, you take my kids away from me. Like that's everything. So that's mm -hmm. their number one claim to fame is the children and the money. Right. And here's the cool thing is when you start doing the internal work and I, I've heard, you know, from you where you talk to people and they're like, well, I don't think I can afford to hire you. You've got to go over here and pay this attorney umpteen million dollars or what you know, tens of thousands of dollars. You know, here's the thing that I've seen you're going to pay the attorney anyway. And then you'll probably pay the attorney twice or three times or 10 times what you were paying if you don't do the work. Yep. Absolutely. That's a fact. It's going to keep going and going. Yep. That's a fact. And the attorneys, like their zone of genius is the legal part. Their zone of genius has nothing to do with the emotional part. And there's two sides to a divorce. To every divorce, there's two sides. There's the business part. There's the emotional part. But we've been so conditioned and trained to think like the business part is number one. That's what we start with. That's what we and then we hire. Say we do hire a, a fabulous, reputable um, attorney. And we're like, ah, oh, OK, everything's under control but you're missing the most important piece, the top number one piece. And this is why I want the world to know this. Like that is the most important part is the emotional part. And that there's two aspects Your own to personal the emotional part. Exactly. Right. Right. And you can't control what the other person is going to do. I mean, I want to be really clear about that. You cannot make somebody be different than they actually are, but it's amazing what happens when you get your own thoughts, energy, mindset, actions yep. under control. Right. Yep. Exactly. Because energy is rippling out all the time, all the time from mm -hmm. us. So if I'm in a scarcity energy, if I'm scared and intimidated and believe like, oh, my God, my kids, da, 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 then that's what's rippling out from me. 
And the, and the other person, the narcissist can feel that energy. And that's what they prey on, P-R-E-Y. They prey on that. And I and the way I describe this whole they scenario is, yeah, the way I describe this whole scenario is the, the vic, the, I don't like this word because nobody's a victim, but for the sake of the conversation, the victim in the situation does become the prey to the predator. And the predator is the narcissist. And it's a whole game, mm -hmm. just like you see out in the wild with animals, the chase and the and the adrenaline of like, oh, I'm gonna get him, I'm gonna get him, I'm gonna get him, get him, get him. And then pounce, the predator gets the prey. Make it scream. And win. That was the goal. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've seen over and over yeah. and over again. Yeah. And if you're like my cat catching a bunny. They're going to jump on it. It's going to scream and then they're going to let it go. And they're going to do this over and over and over again yep. until the inevitable, unfortunate conclusion. Right. You don't want exactly. to be the bunny. Right. Right. So I teach and my clients. Unfortunately, I've seen the bunny. Oh, I've seen people be the bunny, you know, right. like, you, you know, yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. And that's what I teach my clients. I teach my clients how to stop that that chase and that fearful like oh my gosh i'm gonna die feeling inside of them because if my kids are taken away from me if i'm left broke or if i'm left broke with my kids right right that fearful feeling because that energy is what's feeding mm -hmm. the narcissist right literally right. spoon feeding Right. And it's that prey drive, mm -hmm. literally, that they are getting high from. And when you yep. stop the prey drive yep, and put an end to it, and you're no longer the prey, things change. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it all comes down to showing up as your calm, confident, and courageous self. Because what combats a narcissist? Your confidence. Mm -hmm. And that's felt. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So how does somebody go about getting in touch with you? They, I always offer a 30 minute, no cost, no obligation. Talk with me. It's called a total break, a uh, total clarity breakthrough call with me. And like I said, they can get on a call with me, whether they choose to work with me or not. My, my thing is to, get the emotional support, whether you choose me or not, get the emotional support. If you're in the middle of this, get the emotional support before you start this, get the emotional support and even after. So um, the link, I guess I, I gave you the link. It's a, it's a jot form that they could fill out and mm -hmm. I will get that email and they, um, I will contact them personally via email. Yep. You know, make sure you contact Denise if you're going through this or thinking about going through this. Yeah. Um, you know, the amazing thing is preparation is key. Yes. Yeah. Having a plan. Absolutely. Having yeah. a plan and being able to, to execute on it and not be the prey is yes. key. Yes. Thank you so much, Janice. I appreciate you being here today. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Haley. And thank you to your audience for showing up and listening and if it's not them, maybe they know somebody that they can send this link to, to help them out. Awesome. Yeah. Y'all please share, you know, the word about Denise with your friends that are going through divorce or thinking about it because it can be life-changing or dealing with a really difficult family member who is narcissistic. She's really good with that too. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks y'all. Take care. Bye.